The difference quotient is something that you come across in the Calc 1 class. Um, it requires quite a bit of algebra skills, so I would just want to take some time to uh, practice doing those algebra skills. We're not going to really talk about what the difference quotient is used for. Um, that will happen in a Calc 1 class, but just how we can practice uh, reducing it down. So here's the difference quotient. And it's just a function. We would start out with some function. We would plug in f of uh, x plus h, and then we would subtract f of x and then divide it by h. Okay. So let's just look at some functions here. Um, let's start out just with f of x is x squared minus 3. And let's just practice some things from, say, an Algebra 2 course. So we're going to input 3 into our function. So that's just going to be 3 squared take away 3 or 9 minus 3 or 6. This time we're going to input our a, so that's just a squared minus 3. Can't do much there. And here we're going to input a plus 1, so that's going to be a plus 1 squared. Maybe that's fair, write that a little differently. So that would be like a plus 1 times a plus 1 minus 3, which is a squared plus 2a plus 1 minus 3, which is finally a squared plus 2a minus 2. Okay, now let's find this for our function. Now the difference quotient, when we're doing that algebra, I like to do it in parts. What I like to do is I like to find f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so let's first think about plugging in x plus h into our function. So that's going to be x plus h squared take away 3. Now we'll deal with that in a minute. And then we're going to minus off f of x. Now it's a good idea to always put that in parentheses. And then we're going to put that all over h. Okay. Now let's practice reducing what we see in orange. And that's kind of why I did this problem right here. You see how we plugged in a plus 1? Well, it's the same idea. We have to plug in x plus h. So that's going to be x plus h times x plus h. Now it's just foiling it out, distributing it out, however you want to think about it. So that's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Now we have that minus 3 hanging off the end. Now let's take and actually distribute the negative 1 into that. So we get negative x squared plus 3. And then we have that all over h. And here's how you know you did, or you probably did, the difference quotient correct. Take a look at the top here. If you look, x squared and negative x squared cancel out. Negative 3 and positive 3 cancel out. The only pieces that are left, 2x plus h and h squared, both contain an h. So that's a really good indicator that you probably did your algebra right because this quantity that's on top should be divisible by h. And so if we divide by h, we get 2x plus h. So that's the difference quotient for our first function. Now let's keep going and let's keep practicing because different kinds of functions lead to different sort of algebraic problems we're going to come across. So here's our difference quotient. We want to find that this time our function is 3x minus 7. So remember it's the function with x plus h plugged in. So that's the function with x plus h plugged in. That's this part minus our function itself in parentheses all over h. Okay? Now you got to follow your rules of algebra here, so we're going to distribute. We're going to distribute. Combine up your like terms. Now look what's happening here. I'm sorry, I wrote the function wrong. Here, wait a second. Let me go back and erase it. That's 3x 
minus 7. That's a way to catch your mistakes here. Because what should happen is, is things should cancel out. Okay, so look what, what's happening here. So our 3x and our negative 3x, that's how I caught the mistake, cancels out. Negative 7, positive 7 cancels out. We get 3h divided by h. The answer is 3. Way to go. We did it. Okay. Let's do another one. This time our function is 2x squared. So let me write the difference quotient here on the side here. That's f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So this time when we plug in, so the first thing you plug in is x plus h. So that's 2 times the quantity of x plus h inputted squared. Okay, And then we're going to minus, in parentheses, f of x all over h. Okay, Now remember, we have to follow our rules of algebra, so we have to foil that out. So we're going to get 2 times. Now let's distribute that. Now, if you know that shortcut, go ahead and use it. Um, that's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared if we were to FOIL it, and then minus 2x squared over h. This 2 here is sitting in front of, see how it's sitting in front of this quantity, just like it is in the function. So you have to distribute it. And so we get 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 2x squared over h. Now, at this point, we should have some things that cancel out, like we've got this one and this one to cancel out. The only thing that's left, they both contain H's. So that's a really good um, indication that your algebra was correct. And if we divide them both by H, you remember you have to divide both terms by H, we get 4X plus 2H. So there is our answer for that one. Now I would like to look at a algebraic fraction. I, I know that my students um, tend to struggle with fractions, so I like to uh, show an example that contains a fraction. So remember what we're trying to find. We're trying to find f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Okay. So think about what our input is this time for this function. Our input for this function goes here and here. See our input? So in that first piece, that's where the x plus h is going to go. And this feels really kind of funky. But if we plug in x plus h, we get x plus h over x plus h plus 1. See, every place that the x was sitting, I took it out and I inputted x plus h. Now I'm going to minus the original function, which is only one term, so I don't have to really put parentheses. It's just going to minus it all over h. Now the key here, just to give me room, I'm going to erase this here. Um, the key here is to get a common denominator. Um, and I think the most effective way is to multiply this entire bottom, top and bottom, by the same thing, we're going to multiply by x plus h plus 1 and x plus 1 because those are the denominators we see right here. Okay. Now, to keep it equivalent to the original, I have to do that to the top and to the bottom. So that's a trick you want to uh, use for problems like this. Now, what's going to happen, okay, if this, both pieces are going to multiply by this first top, the x plus h plus 1s are going to cancel, so I'm going to have an x plus h times an x plus 1. I'm going to do the same thing. It's going to sit by this x. The x plus 1s are going to cancel, but I'm going to be left with x plus h plus 1. And on the bottom for these, leave it alone, okay? You're just going to want to leave the pieces as just a line of quantities multiplied together. Don't try to multiply them out. It will not help you. Your goal here, let's uh, 
is the same goal now as the other problems. Let's get a big long line of terms on the top, and then we should only be left with things that contain H's. Okay, so what do we get? Well, first let's distribute these ones, okay? So we get x squared plus x plus xh plus h. Now let's distribute negative x to each of those. We get negative x squared, negative xh, negative x. And you see, I'm just right in the bottom again. I'm not doing anything to it. Now what should happen here is we should have anything that doesn't contain an um, h should have an opposite there to make it cancel out. So look, our x squared and our negative x squared, great. Positive x and negative x. Now this one has an h, but look, it's going to cancel. x plus h and negative x plus h. The only thing left on top is an h. So anything that's left on top should contain an h. Now it might be multiple terms or just one term like this one. And then we physically divide the h. h divided by h is 1. So that is your answer for a fractional one. Now the last type of example I want to do is going to be a square root, I think, maybe. And I think I'm going to do two more examples. Let's look at the difference quotient for the square root of 2x plus 1. Again, let me write it to the side here. So I'm going to stick into the function where the x is sitting. My input now becomes x plus h minus off the original function all over h. Now this, let me erase this so I have some room here. The key to these ones is to use the conjugate, okay? So I'm going to multiply the top by the same thing, but with a minus. Right here becoming a plus. And whatever I do to the top, I'm going to do the bottom. Kind of a similar trick that we saw before. What's great about the conjugate, um, I'm going to make a little note then, I, I'll have to erase it, but I know that a plus b times a minus b ends up being the first term squared minus the last term squared. So what's great about these two quantities is it ends up being the first thing squared minus the last thing squared, so the square roots pop away, and so we get the first thing minus the last thing. Now again, the bottom, leave it alone. Who cares what it, what it looks like? Okay. Now, on the top here, we need to do a little, let's distribute, 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 okay? So we can get a big long line. So we get 2x plus 2h plus 1 minus 2x minus 1. Bottom, leave that sucker alone. Who cares about it? Remember, our only main goal is to get rid of that H. So, what happens here? Well, we got a negative two, a positive 2x and a negative 2x, positive 1 and negative 1. Look what's left. The only thing that left has an H in it. And that's exactly what we want to see. And then we cancel the H's, and our final answer is 2 over the square root of 2 times X plus H plus 1 plus 2X plus 1. And there you go. So there is the difference quotient for a radical. And let's just practice one more example with a polynomial, okay? 
So remember, here's our difference quotient. First thing we're going to input is x plus h. So that's going to go into all the x spots, okay? So that's going to be x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h. Then we're going to minus off the original function in parentheses. That's our f of x. And then we're going to put it all over h. Okay. Now let's actually foil out that one. Distribute the negative 2 to that one. Distribute the negative to that one. Okay. So we're just doing some algebra here. So we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2x minus 2h minus x squared plus 2x all over h. Let's take a look here. So our x squared goes away because we have a negative x squared. Or negative 2x and positive 2x. And then look at what's left. We have 2xh plus h squared minus 2h. All of those have h's in them, so we need to divide all of those by h's. And so we get 2x plus h minus 2 as our final answer for that one. So there's some practice of a difference quotient. We're going to uh, practice doing all of these different types, and hopefully that video will help you.